Hey guys, welcome to my video on the thyroid in pregnancy. So I'm going to start off by talking about <clears throat> two hormones that are of importance in pregnancy. One is a beta HCG, which obviously is not present um, in the non-pregnant state. And we have estrogen, which is present in the non-pregnant state, but it's increased in pregnancy. So beta HCG acts like TSH. It acts like TSH so much there that TSH normally binds to and it's going to cause the thyroid to secrete your T4 which is the hormone and highest percentage that the thyroid secretes and some T3. So now in response in response the thyroid, the TSH, is going to decrease because, see, if you have beta HCG stimulating the thyroid, the and the T4 increases over normal, you're going to have a decrease in TSH in response, so that for the most part you have something that looks like this, a decrease in TSH and a slight, slight increase, and I'm going to draw a small arrow upwards, a slight increase in T4 and maybe a slight increase in T3, but mainly it's a slight increase in T4. And remember that that's a free T4. So. These are hormones that are directly secreted by the thyroid, so they're going to be free hormones for the most part. An increased estrogen level causes an increase in thyroxin binding globulin. So remember, the in the circulation, there are TBGs, or thyroid binding, thyroxin binding globulins, and basically what they do is, it's all in the name, they bind the thyroxin hormones. So you've got T4, T4. So the interesting thing about this is, yes, the T4 is in the circulation, but it's virtually useless when it's bound to the globulin because it's not acting on the tissue. It's the free T4 that acts on the tissue. And of course, the more uh, TBGs you have, the more T4s you're going to have bound to the TBGs. And this is a TBG. And so there are two lab values that you have for your thyroid hormones. There's the free and the total. So the free T4 and the total T4. The free T4 reflects just the free T4. The total T4 reflects is the actually the free T4 plus the T4 that's bound to the globulin. So I'm going to put T4 globulin. So as you can imagine, since you have an increase in estrogen levels that causes an increase in TBG, a pregnant patient is going to have a substantial increase in total T4. And actually, this goes up quite a bit. It goes up to about one and a half times your pre-pregnancy state. So, so when you treat someone, now you have a pregnant patient and they have a slight increase in free T4 And a great increase in the amount of t um, the amount of thyroid binding globulins. So you're going to have not very much thyroid hormone that's free to bind the target tissue. Whatever is being most of what is being secreted by the thyroid is going to enter the circulation, and it may be free, and it may be slightly increased, 
but it's going to find so many TBGs to bind to that there's not going to be, it's going to be a deficient state for that T4 to convert to T3 to bind to your target tissue. So there's not going to be enough of this floating around to convert to T3 and bind target tissue. T4 also binds target tissue, but T3 more so. T3 is more potent. So, for someone who is pregnant, you're going to have to replenish your thyroid hormone to make it so that you have a total T4 that is about one and a half times the pre-pregnancy state. So you're going to continually monitor the total T4. You're going to continually monitor the total T4 so that it stays at about 1.5 times the pre-pregnancy baseline value. Actually, T3 as well. And you're going to keep replacing the thyroid hormone. And you usually do replacement to with level thyroxine, which is T4. Now, if someone already has a problem with their thyroid, so they already have like hypothyroidism, before they're pregnant, they have primary hypothyroidism. You're going to have to give even more. Because when you already have hypothyroidism, what happens is the thyroid, if it's primary hypothyroidism, the thyroid is already defective and it might not even respond to this beta HCG that acts like TSH. So you not only have, if the person is undergoing therapy for primary hypothyroidism and they have the increased estrogen levels, whatever hormone you're giving them, a lot of it's going to go to the GBGs. So you have to really increase, increase the amount of hormone you give so that when these TBGs get saturated, you're going to have then whatever hormone you're giving actually going to the target tissue. Thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe.